Hey guys, Jay Sposerman here with Easton's brand new Taper T64 Full Metal Jacket. Been so excited to get these arrows in. We're going to be doing a, a, a two-part, or actually even a three-part series with these arrows. We're going to do a setup series where we actually build them, and then we're going to do a testing series where we're out on the range with them, that sort of thing, and then we're, of course, going to hunt with them in the woods. Um, for this first part in this setup video, I want to talk a little bit about the arrow itself and that is the fact that it is a taper arrow it starts at the insert in at six millimeters and it tapers all the way back at the knock end to four millimeters this is going to do a few things for you first it's going to add about 30 percent more foc without having to add uh, additional point weight or like a brass insert or something like that secondly because the arrow tapers from six millimeters to four millimeters as this arrow goes in the animal that friction is going to be reduced and we're going to get more pass-throughs and have a more uh, a streamlined flight through the animal plus we should have great downrange accuracy with these they should be really quiet and we'll get to those when we uh, when we get them in the field right now we're going to cut them and been getting a lot of questions about cutting these arrows Easton has put a max cut line on here guys it is kind of hard to see through the camera but to your naked eye it's no problem at all it says max cut there's a white line and we just got to make sure guys that we stay in front of this line we don't want to get back in here if you get back in here that's going to get into your taper section and that's going to cause problems for the arrow so when we cut we want to stay in front of the max cut line to stay in this portion of the arrow right here so we're going to go ahead and cut these <laughs> All right guys, well, we got our shafts cut and the next step in the process is really important. Being that this is a aluminum jacket wrapped around carbon, the inside of the arrow is actually carbon. So where the insert is gonna go in, we gotta make sure and get that cleaned out really well and that's a good tip for any arrow that you're gonna build yourself. If you don't clean that out, you're not gonna get good insert to arrow contact and that's where you have them pull out in 3D targets and things like that. So what I do is I just take some, some rubbing alcohol, pour it in my little dish here, and then I just take a standard Q-tip and get it nice and wet. And then we're just going to go right inside the shaft. And I like to really get it and get all those walls. And when you pull it out, it should be nice and colored like that. And when, when, when you got all that color on there, that means this is clean. And we're ready to move on to our next step, which is actually putting our inserts in. All right, guys, we've got our arrows cut. We've got them cleaned. And so we're moving on to actually gluing the inserts in. Now, this is a six millimeter end on the taper T64s here. So it's going to be a little bit different as far as in, gluing in the insert than you'd be used to with, say, like a five millimeter FMJ. With the five millimeter FMJ, of course, we have the insert. We use the green tool and it's got the hidden insert technology and boom we seat that insert up inside here it's going to be a little bit different than that with the taper t64s it's going to be exactly like an easton six millimeter where the insert butts right up to the to the shaft so all i'm going to do is i'm going to take my insert and i like to use blazer bond guys you can use what you want this sticks for me i never have inserts pull out and i like to get a good healthy amount on there because you can always wipe it off so now that we got that nice and covered, take my shaft right here, and I like to get it going. And then once I get it going, I like to spin it so that I get that glue covering it really good. And then I go ahead and seat it right there. And then all we're gonna do is take a towel and wipe off the excess, and we're ready to go on to the next step. We've got our inserts glued in, and we're ready to move on to the next step, which is actually attaching a wrap to the knock-in portion of the shaft. I'm a huge promoter of wraps. I really like using them a lot. They provide great vein contact. Plus, if you use a bright one, it's gonna really help you track that arrow in flight. There's a couple of different ways you can use to attach your wraps. I'm gonna show you both of them right now. But the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to take an alcohol pad and you're gonna to wanna to clean that end where the wrap's gonna go. We're gonna get those nice and cleaned off because you don't want any, any oils or anything like that on the shaft where something's gonna um, prevent that adhesion. So we're gonna get those cleaned off 
And then one of the first, first ways to do it is you can take the shaft with the wrap on a magazine or something like that and simply line it up and then just start rolling across. And as you roll that uh, shaft, the weight of the shaft will pick up the wrap and it'll roll it right on there and get everything set just perfectly. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it, and this is the way that I really like to do it, is I eyeball it. <laughs> and I've been doing it this way for a long time, so it works really good for me. And I just take and press the top portion down, line it up, give it a good press, and then I go back to the magazine, and then I just push and roll, and push and roll, and push and roll, and give it a good wipe down and it's attached and ready to go and we're ready to fletch these arrows and that's going to be our next step. We got the T64 set here in the Bitsenberger fletching jig and I've got my fletch arm and I really like uh, a helical fletch and that's one thing about building your own custom arrows guys is that you can decide how you want that uh, vein orientation when you when you set it in your jig using a various arms and that's one of the reasons that I like the bits and burger so this is a three degree right helical and it works really good for steer and fixed blade broadheads or really anything downrange so we got it set in here and we're just gonna start fletching apply my uh, blazer glue right down the shaft and then we just go a vein at a time All right, the arrows are fletched and they're ready to go. I like to take one more step in my process. Some people say it's unnecessary, but for me, it's crucial. It really helps with that vein adhesion. And when you're, when you're you know, shooting through an animal or into dirt or into a 3D target, it just helps keep those veins attached. And I just take a toothpick, I take a little dab of glue, and I just attach that glue to the back, right where the back of the fletching touches the shaft. And I just put a little dab there. And then I go to the front. And I do the exact same thing. It's a minor step, but a necessary step. These arrows are ready for the field. Well, as you can see, we've got the Full Metal Jacket Taper T64s fletched up. They're ready to go. Our next video, we're going to be on the range doing some testing, and I can't wait to bring you guys that. Thanks for taking the time to check out the video, and keep the questions coming.